Hi, this is Angela Sasser, fantasy artist and illustrator and a mask maker. I do all the things. And if you haven't seen my art before, you can go check it out at angelasasser.com. I also have the project that I'm working on today is a birthstone themed project, which you see up here on the screen. You can see more of it at gymgoddesses.angelicshades.com So today I'm continuing my stream from the last point we left off. I had little lady February here, my little gym goddess for February. And I laid in all the color flats. And today I'm going to be trying to add some shading. So that should be exciting. I'm a little intimidated because I'm, I'm used to kind of over rendering things and I'm much better at basically <laughs> doing more complex things and I'm trying to keep it simple, keep it clean. We'll see how that works out for me. It's not my strong suit. But that's kind of why this is good practice for me. It's, it's a good stress relief not to have to sit there and do so much detail. And, uh, yeah, so let me, uh, put up the intros in the chat, so if anyone can join us, they can hop in and see what's happening. So give me one second to do all that. Oh, goodness, I'm actually an hour late today for this afternoon stream. I blew my schedule already. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed. But it's for a good reason, because my my mother convinced me to play hooky with her so we could go see Avengers Endgame, which is a movie we've both been looking forward to. And uh, that was a lot of fun. Although we were in there from like 9.50 a.m. till uh, I got home around 2.30 because I wanted to stay after the credits and all that good stuff. So then I had to toss down lunch and get going with this so that is why I'm late today that's my excuse but who let me tell you I am just exhausted <laughs> after Game of Thrones last night and like in game today it's been an emotional time in fandom you guys there's been lots of love and death and all of the stories coming to an end and I won't spoil anything, but it's just, it's been a wild emotional ride. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan and an Avengers fan like I am, it's just like, whew. Need some Xanax after last night and today. Okay. Oh yeah, let me put it in the chat. Welcome to my stream. That's up in the chat. Okay, so before I begin, I just have to plug this. Art of Sam was in here last time. She's a good buddy of mine. And <clears throat> while she was watching me work on the chibis, she was like, oh, tempted to make chibis. And she did. Look at this beautiful chibi that she made. It's of one of her courtesan characters. And... Um, I love it. I actually, this is just a perfect example actually of having that simple shading but complicated in the right places like the eyes. Same here for another um, style example I have up here by Yamio. If you want to check Sam's art out, you should go see her on Twitter. She's Zephry. So go do it and tell her to make more chibis. Because I have infected her with the chibi pox, and now she must make all the courtesan characters into chibis because they are too adorable. But I have them up in here actually for style reference. Because I want to try and keep it simple but make it complex enough. So, wish me luck because that's hard. Okay, so... 
And I'm a, bit, I'm a bit rusty with digital. I've been doing watercolor for the rest of these pieces or really simple digital stuff. So I'm kind of intimidated to get back into this and sort of remind myself, what the heck? How the heck do I do this again? And I always do things different ways. I'm always experimenting to try and find a look that I like. So let's see, there was a painterly brush I like to use. I think it was Char Charlie Bow Waters brush. It had a nice amount of texture in it, but it blended really smoothly and I liked it. I have so many brushes now, you guys. <laughs> Other Sam in the chat says, I'll feel hard to make more tubes if you do more Song of Exile, which is the original story I've been picking out for like years now. Ooh, I have Kyle's brushes too. <laughs> too many brushes. Which brush do I want to play with? Let's see what's in the paint box. Let me just use like the hard brush, which <laughs> it's my go-to. It's just simple and easy and I can control it with the, uh, the pressure from my hand. have the transfer on so it can soften. Oh, let's see. All the paint pressure. So before I was using an adjustment layer to do the shadows, but I'm actually going to return back to the way I used to do things, which was painting on each individual colors layer. And that feels a lot more natural to me, like, I understand that better as a traditional painter, so. Because the thing about painting with the adjustment layers is it had a habit of, like, kind of sucking the life out of the colors. That's the other trick I like to do with blending is just, just alt color pick, alt color pick until you've got a nice transition going on. Or you can blend with um, the smudge brush, which I have like a very textury smudge brush. If you don't like those ant lines, control H and they will go away. But I still have the layers selected. So let's see if I can do this without overworking it. <laughs> If you have any questions or anything of that nature, feel free to put them in the chat and I will look up every now and again and check that out and try to answer on the mic. Yes, I am so rusty at this. I've even gotten so used to traditional lately that I keep trying to swipe dust off the screen. Like when I'm drawing on here, I'm like, there's, there's a stray mark. Wait, I can't just wipe it off. That is not how digital works.
this takes significantly more brain processing power, so I may end up going a, a little more silent than usual while I'm processing. <laughs> Until I get comfortable with, it, uh, with this again. So I think I've done more cell shading lately, so that's fresher in my mind. But y'all, patrons had to choose the soft shaded style. <laughs> oh, hey, is the is the music working? Is it not working? Let me know. I can either turn it up a little or some such. Yeah, I'm just like lightly making strokes to blend with my to blend with my stylus and with just to make it have some texture to it. Let's see, let me address the music issue. Okay, how's the music now? Is it too much? Okay, good. Now I gotta give her some little blushy cheeks. blushy nose and lips. Lady of February is very natural. Point of fact, I think I forgot some makeup on uh, on Lady of January. I'll have to go back and do her still because I only did the example piece for her. And, but oh, hey, another reason why I'm kind of like out of sorts today. I had a convention this weekend and a wedding. <laughs> so we like ran to the convention and set up there and then ran to a wedding and, and had fun there. And then ran back to the convention the next day, so I'm just kind of like... It's, it's been a, an awesome but long weekend, and so I'm just like... Oh, a little brain dead, too, from that. Let's see, I want to for firm up the shadow under her neck a little. Yeah, it was cool. We, uh, along with other artists... We did a panel on streaming, and that was cool. And it reminded me to be accountable for actually keeping a schedule today. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cool artists were in that, and we... I'll have to share the, um... We put together a handout with, like, suggestions for equipment and software if you're interested in streaming. And that was a lot of fun. JordanCon is just a really awesome, welcoming event. Mmm, can't quite get these eyes right. Probably overworking it. Jordan Con was awesome. The wedding was great because it was um, our friend who does a lot of LARP. 
our friends who do a lot of LARPing. So they had their friends there. It was just like the coolest fantasy geek crew. And it's always really nice to be among your kindred spirits. It wasn't a big stressful wedding like a lot of weddings I've gone to. It was just very sweet and heartfelt. And I could really appreciate that. So if Kaylee or Jessica tunes in, thanks for letting us be a part of your big day. That was so much fun. And Jelanaga is just a beautiful place. For those who have never been, it's like the, this mountain gold mining town up here in Georgia, in North Georgia. But yeah, went to the con, went to the wedding. Uh, got back from the art show. Got to sit for a little while until Game of Thrones came on and stressed me out. <laughs> See, now I'm just rambling and like shading the same things over again. <laughs> Oops. There we go. I think I needed this therapy of just like shade, shade. Brush stroke. Let's see if I zoom out. again see they're barely shaded and I'm like how you make the shading look so good it's there's barely any here except for the eyes like I noticed the eyes are always like super shaded and that's probably where I should concentrate next and I think I'm actually gonna play with the tones with the hue slider my cheek. My butt's looking a little muddy. Let's tweak that saturation a bit, shall we? Which means my mid-tone was probably a little too dark. with your eyes. Or the blush, because it's kind of fascinating to watch the different layers and what kind of effects they have or the different blending modes and what kind of effects they have. Ooh, sickly. I tend towards multiply for that. All right, I see something I don't like about the way I've lined the eyes is that 
you know, the highlight has an outline and that kind of takes away the drama of the glow that the eyes are meant to have. Like she's supposed to have jewel-like eyes. All the ladies have jewel-like eyes. So. I am actually going to erase those lines and just bring the detail back in with color instead. Just thinking about how these are done. Yeah, these lines are so harsh. Actually, let's use the selection tool. I always forget this will make a cleaner erase than using the just manually trying to erase it with strokes. Because I do everything the hard way. So yeah, hopefully you guys are dealing better with that Game of Thrones and in-game anxiety than I am. Although, uh, to be fair, I didn't cry in Endgame. I was actually more mad at, at, at stuff that happened in that movie than anything, but I'm not gonna discuss any spoilers just in case people want to go into it very blind. But yeah. It affected me in different ways than expected, I will say that. But like, I, I know other friends who've had a rougher time with it than I did. Tweak my brush settings again. <laughs> the lobby eyes. I gotta fix those globby eyes. She looks like really high or something. And we're gonna straighten these pupils up too. Oh, evil February will claim your soul. But yes, I should remember to use the lasso tool more often. It would make my digital work a lot neater. Oops. Yeah, I'd say uh, of the two fandom things that have happened this weekend, Game of Thrones has got me still like, what did I just watch? What is happening? What gonna happen? That was just crazy. Oh, the Psyche in the chat says that she's never got into Game of Thrones and she's not into high fantasy or Lord of the Rings or Hobbit and whatnot. And I just gotta say that Game of Thrones is so far from Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. Like, I barely call it a high fantasy except for, like, the more recent stuff. Yeah, it's, um... Ooh, one of her eyes is smaller than the other. Ga Game of Thrones is much more grounded and much more character-driven. Magic has really only become a thing. It, it was always more of a subtle thing. In fact, I think it's one of my big influences as far as the fantasy that I personally like because it's so low magic and so grounded in character stories rather than magic. Ugh. Magic does the thing and there are no consequences. There are definitely consequences. 
And I'd say it's actually quite a reaction. It's a direct reaction to Tolkien, like, in the other direction. <laughs> Considering there's a character named Samwise, and I, I'm pretty sure that was a, a nod to Tolkien. But in a way of, yes, I like Tolkien too. Now let us subvert all of it. I gave her a little chin. little nose. I wonder if she needs that nose. Let's see, we're gonna do some surgery and see how she does without a nose. Just cleaning up some lines here with a smudge. So I debated on noses while I was drawing these gals, like do they really need the noses? We're gonna mask it out and see what happens. Yeah, Psyche, that's that's totally fair. Like, I would not recommend Game of Thrones for everyone because it's it's very violent and brutal, and like, you have to have a base tolerance to a lot of those things and to fantasy or just stories in general that whoops that um are punishing they're much more grounded in a place that you got to go through some suffering but at the same time the payoff that comes from the angst and torture that these characters go through is so satisfying because we see them go through so much you know, I can't... I don't know about the nose. Hmm. Nose, no nose. It looks weird. It's like she's got a little dimple. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna bring the nose back. We're keeping the nose. Are you guys like it without the... Let me, let me look at it again. I'm trying to think if I could just insinuate a nose with shadow. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm gonna try and shape up the shading there and maybe... Maybe. This nose isn't... I think what's bothered me without it is just it having a blob for a, a shadow and it doesn't look quite right. Yeah, shaping it up looks a bit better. I just probably made it a little too... Let's see. Do they have noses? You know, they don't. <laughs> Nobody has noses! How do they breathe? Well, then I'm wondering if it's okay for them to have noses because they're more along that chibi style instead of like chibi SD. Super deformed. You know what? I kind of like it if it's got harsh shading there. It looks alright. Yay! This means I don't have to draw noses anymore. I am going to bring in just a touch more shading there. And here I said, I'm not going to overwork this. And here I am 
setting. I think that's a good compromise because a lot of the lines in this have just, I realize have been too, too harsh. Okay, I can dig it. shaping this up a little. And this is why digital takes me forever. Back to her eyes. The eyes. So yeah, I like a good adventure fantasy too. Although one fantasy thing I saw previews for that I didn't even realize was happening was um uh there's a, a TV series for his dark materials. Which I ne I've never read, I have to admit. But I kind of enjoyed the movie The Golden Compass. Everybody hated it, I think, but I actually kind of liked it. You know, like cool spirit animals and like cool stuff. <laughs> and a, a, a polar bear fight. I mean, it was pretty epic. So I'm kind of excited that there's a series coming now. Hopefully they'll, they'll finish it instead of like, just randomly stop making it. And yes, I am excited for that Good Omen show too. Another book I need to read, but I remember I started reading the book and really liked it, so. If it's anything like the bit of the book that I read and, and really enjoyed, I am excited for it. Plus all the actors they got for it so far, like, so much charisma on that cast. I'm excited because it's generally a lot of people that I really like their performances. Gosh, it's starting soon, isn't it? Like, really soon? It's not this week, is it?
it's next month. Okay, I definitely gotta... I gotta tune into that one. It looks so good. Uh, did you guys, <laughs> did you guys watch the preview where it's it's all the nuns singing about the fresh baby smell? Oh, it had me in stitches. Fresh baby smell. It was like satanic nuns. It was great. Definitely like that better without the harsh outline in the eyes. I'm bringing just a little bit of an outline back in. Oh, so another cool thing about Jordan Con was that Dando Santos was the artist guest of honor, and he's I love his work. He's a very he's an amazing artist, and he's a cool guy to talk to. And he gave a panel on the art of the name of the wind and talked about how he put together this interior illustration project to do, to illustrate the special edition and talked about how he got his ideas like or just putting on the audiobook and immersing himself and just doodling whatever scenes came to mind and that sounds like so much fun so it was, it was a lot of learning from Dan this weekend as well that was one of the few panels I was able to go to besides the one I helped host on streaming art But yeah, seeing all the cool stuff from Name of the Wind, which is another thing I have not read, definitely made me want to give it another chance. Because I tried to read it, found the intro kind of boring, and gave up on it. But now that I've seen where a little bit of where it goes, I'm actually more intrigued. So, <coughs> excuse me. I would definitely have to give Name of the Wind another chance. Yeah, 
this looks too far away. Cute. Okay. I like where it's going. I'm knocking the rust off of this whole digital painting thing. I'm gonna play with the darkness of the eyes though, just because um, they're coming in at a darker value than the outline. And I wanted the outline to kind of fall back a little so that the black outline around the outside stays the darkest thing on the screen to kind of preserve that Art Nouveau style that I'm going for. So we're gonna lighten it up a little bit. Actually, let's do brightness instead. Contrast and brightness. Yeah, okay, I like that better. It keeps it from fighting for attention with the outline. Another thing I love about digital is I can sit here and piecemeal edit. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I thought the entire name of the Wind series was out already, but I, I guess it's not. What's it? It's supposed to be three books? Is it? going to be more than three. Oh, wow. Ambitious. See, here is where people have a lot of fun with the chibis because they bring in this cool highlight. It's where there seems to be a lot of shading as well, uh, with the clothing being kind of flat. So I think actually I am going to start with some highlights. I think when trying to uh, make something simple, I gotta try and find the major shadow forms here, which I think would be the hair like in the back here. So that all reads as one shape instead of trying to break it up with too much detail. Really, it's just fun to like let your brain turn off and not do 
all the detail things. Which my other choice for work today, when I'm when not streaming, was to draw a really intricate mandala window. <laughs> that one's been sitting on the workbench for a while because I've been so busy doing conventions and other stuff, or a convention and all the other events that I mentioned, that I haven't had a chance to like sit and really attend to it. And here I thought I'd be able to get like all of those mandalas done in a week. Nope. That is not how the art works. Especially when I get over ambitious and I'm like, I'm gonna put the flowers in too. Because I'm a genius. I'll draw a lot of flowers and surely that won't take forever. Oh, it's sort of delayed reaction. Psyche mentioned Supernatural in the um, in the chat, and yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of that one too. But I haven't watched it. I haven't watched the latest season. Next season's supposed to be the last season, and I'm like kind of in shock because they. I thought they'd never end the show. Part of me wants them to end it, and part of me wants to go on forever because it's this comforting formula. But I suppose it has to end. It has to end sometime. I'm trying to think if I want these candles to reflect in her hair or if that's going a little too crazy with the highlighting. It might be a little too crazy, but we're gonna. We're gonna do it! I need to catch up on this latest season of Supernatural. I heard it's gone crazy. I gotta see what I'm missing. So, pro tip about painting candles. They are translucent, generally, with the wax, so they almost always have that, like, center core shadow thing going on. Because of the subsurface scattering, aha, that is uh, happening inside of the candle. Oh gosh, you do have a lot to catch up on. Shit's gone crazy. Yeah, I don't wanna break. I'm painting candles. Work rate, don't you care? Work rate doesn't care about my feelings. All right, everyone, prepare to do stretches. Ooh, I paper kettles. Oh. Stretch. 
match with me. And this eye exercise actually helps because I, if you just stare intently at Photoshop for hours, you are bound to make your eyes strain. So it's nice to be reminded to actually look away from the screen for a while. And this is how I've broken my chair before, because it loosens the arms. So all the screws fall out of the arms, so then <laughs> I have to sit there and screw them back in. I want a sheep t-shirt. See, I gotta check Workgrave's website to see if they have a merch store where you can get a cool sheep t-shirt like their dead-eyed exercise model. All right, we're not gonna take the rest of the break, but the stretching is important, so I try to at least do that. Oh wait, we're not in the hair. Gotta get in the hair layer first. out the brightness and the saturation so she I, I can't explain why it just looks right to me to do this I feel like just little tweaks And let us save, shall we? I realize I have music on for you guys, but I am working in complete silence because I forgot to put on some music for me. I play the non-royalty free stuff for me. Because I'm afraid of the anime soundtracks that I have getting my videos taken down worldwide. Some of the, the anime music is not allowed to be played outside of Japan, so I have to be careful with what I listen to, and I'd rather just play the royalty-free stuff for you guys and not have to worry about it. Alright, so. And hey, I think I see new viewers in the chat. Hello, new people. Feel free to say hi and to ask questions. Give me topics to ramble about or tell me what you're working on. I love to hear what people are doing while they're watching the stream. There we go, now I got some music going. So hello. Let's look at it, set up the, um, maybe try to set up something on Discord so you guys can request music through there if you're patrons. You know what, her lip line is bothering me too. It's like weird, poofy upper lip. Oh no, Photoshop, did you freeze? Oh no. Well, it's a good thing I just saved. Photoshop? Photoshops, can you hear me? <sighs> wow. That could be a better example of 
saving regularly. Photoshop, what are you doing? I can't even select anything in the manager. Computer, what are you doing? Hmm. Now I'm wondering, can you guys still hear me? Am I still on stream? Okay, weird, okay. Everything else seems to be frozen though. How strange. I wonder if OBS is uh, fighting with my system a little bit. <laughs> Computer what do? I can't even select OBS, how weird. Um, <laughs> Welp, I may be restarting to s unfreeze the computer and try this again. So, yep. You see, but let me do task manager one more time. I cannot even select anything. Okay, then. Well, I think I will be right back then. I'm going to restart my computer and hopefully unfreeze the system and hop back on the stream. So bear with me while we have technical difficulties. <laughs> that was weird. It got hung up or frozen or something. But hopefully, hopefully now we're not going to have any more issues. We're not on feed devices. I don't use X. Alright, so there. Music should be back. Computer is unfrozen. Let's try this again. That was really strange. Computers only like to pull this on me when I'm trying to work, of course. Or when there's a deadline. Okay. Ah. Okay. He was offended by my music, apparently. <laughs> making sure music's still playing for everybody else. Got the music. And now I have music too. I was doing here before that all messed up. That's awesome that you've got more sketches going for Liz and Caleb. Good luck with writing. You're on fire getting all the chapters done. I still need to get back to the Uncrucified. 
it has languished far too long. I just get so tired at night, I'm like, ugh. I'm gonna have to see if I can try to start doing something in the morning, but ugh, mornings. I'm definitely a night person. There are just too many things competing for my free time that my little exalted fanfiction has fallen to the wayside. But I have a clear plan for it, I just need to follow the plan. I think I've sorted out the dumb stuff the character was gonna do. And I just need to follow through with their dumb plan. But yes, if you are in the chat, feel free to leave some questions for me. If I have topics to ramble about, otherwise I'm just gonna ramble about whatever comes to mind. Tell me about what you're working on. How did you discover my art? Are you a new person? Have you just stumbled upon me in Twitch or YouTube? It's always exciting to see how people found me. King has mentioned May sketch a day and I'm actually really really excited about that I have decided to do it which sneak peek of the announcement that was gonna go on my patreon at, at some point in the uh, today or tomorrow but I'm using it to just have fun oh my grief I am so burnt out you guys like I love this series I'm gonna keep working on it, but I need to make time at night to indulge in fun projects. And I really haven't because life has been just so full of events and it's been really tiring. So for May Sketch Day, for those who don't know it, it's like, it's exactly what it sounds. The founder of the event basically wanted to encourage himself to be less precious about his art. And, and I feel like preciousness is, is part of my problem because, you know, when for one, when art is your job, you then start switching your mindset about art. Like, it becomes, well, what, it's my job, I gotta make money out of it now, what do I, I, I can only draw things that sell that people are gonna be interested in. And that definitely makes you precious about what you're drawing. And then on top of that, the stresses of, Oh, now I only have like maybe an hour or two at night to concentrate on anything. So then you get really precious about, well, what am I going to do with this hour or two? Am I going to write that novel I've been working on for 10 years? Or am, am I going to, am I going to actually draw or maybe practice skills? Or am I going to stare at Dragon Age Inquisition? <laughs> for like three hours and not really get anything done. But then that's important refresh time because we can't always be drawing and sometimes you need that too. But then I, I have a bad habit of like making myself feel guilty about these things. But anyways, May Sketch Day. What I'm gonna do with May Sketch Day is just to use it as, I'm gonna take an hour to an hour and a half each day before I get to work on stuff and just play. Gosh, so much part of, so much of being a creative person 
is just remembering how to have fun and play and come up with creative solutions to visual or literary problems. And when we don't have that ability to play anymore because we're too caught up in expectations, I think our creativity suffers, our brains suffer. So what I'm going to do with May Sketch a Day is, in general, I'm going to use that hour a day in May to draw things for Song of Exile, my original I novel universe idea. But if I feel like doing something else for fun, like figuring out Anko's horns finally, my D&D character, or just doing whatever that I'm going to let myself, I'm going to give myself permission to have fun because I think part of my problem right now is that life has been very difficult and I haven't really had fun with, with a lot of my art because it's been so stressful. And I've also been working on, on one singular theme for a few years now. So it's like, I need a break from it as much as I love it, but I'm, I can't just quit doing it either. I need to finish, you know, finish all the projects I have planned. So I need that hour a night to stay creative and keep fresh and have fun. These, I mean, this is fun too, but like, there's, there's only so long that you can, that an artist like me, they can stare at the same idea before I'm like, oh, I'm gonna move on. Because I'm much more of an experimental wanderer. It's taken, this whole project of mine was actually my dare to myself to see if I can build a body of work that was consistent without hopping around from thing to thing for years. Which is kind of what got me in trouble trying to be a creative professional in the past, because I'd be like, I've got all these different styles. I don't have a body of work because I've got too many styles. <laughs> so it's nice to have something thematic that can help unite my very busy project fairy. So anyways, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to draw a song of exile or whatever comes to mind. And I hope that anyone else who's thinking about doing May Sketch a Day can do the same. I think it's there to help you be limber, to relax, and to not be precious. We don't want to be precious, y'all. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Meanwhile, the pollen continues to eat my brain. Okay, I've shaded the leg for like the past 10 minutes. Let us move on. Yeah, she's looking cute, y'all. Okay. I haven't decided if I want to shade that shadow or shade the shadow, shade the background. I'll figure it out later. I might put a very small gradient back there just to pop her a little bit. But now we're going to work on the arrow. But yeah, I'd be curious to hear what you guys, if you're going to try May Sketch a Day, or if you're going to participate in Camp Nana Remo coming up in, what, July? What you're planning to do? Tell me your goals, even if they're general. Because I think setting a goal is half the battle. This is meant to be a gold arrow, so I'm working on giving it that metal texture.
I think I can bring in some of the candle flame here too. There would catch a spot of light there. Another happy little highlight right here. More happy little highlights so those highlights won't be lonely. Can't have lonely highlights now. Blending this a bit. The details were starting to get a little distracting. All right, awesome. She's getting there. I'm so happy. I have remembered how to digital paint. All right, let's have some fun with the, the uh, carved candles. Oh wait, I remembered I wanted to get rid of the lip line and that's what I was doing, my computer froze. She's like off center and it doesn't quite work. And I'm wondering if I could actually just do what I did with the nose and um, And uh, we were gonna save again before I try this and it decides not to work, but I do like what I did with the nose and have a soft transition. Or rather have that in with the shapes because it's, those lines are just too harsh and they take away some of the lovely softness of this kind of style. Uh, she's so pretty. I just love all of the like fins and all the little magical highlights. I think I gotta come back later and add particles to this. I think that would be really pretty. I'm just gonna hide the blush marks while I'm trying to do this. And this blending is just basically going over very lightly, crisscrossing directional marks to blend. That's how you get a soft transition. It's not like traditional blending that way. Digital, I find, is a lot of mark making. You'd be surprised at how much mark making you still do when you're painting this way. lines got left in the blush so we're gonna just blend that in 
we are blending See where the white of the teeth has gone over into the skin. I must fix. Just knocking out this white a bit because I don't want her teeth to be like shockingly white compared to the rest. That way the highlights in the piece remain the whitest parts of the piece instead of weird white mouth hole. Now I'm just stopping to consider if I want to add some gradients into the piece. Oh no, did my music mess up again? Ah, oh, music. Why you do this? You're not playing on two devices. There we go. Now the music is back, hopefully for you guys. But yes, I like what I've seen of the, um, there being just like a gradient of purple or yellow. And you've got a teal in here, a gold in here. There's a subtle gradient going on, like Sam did it in hers too, where she's got a green at the bottom. And some warmer tones up here. It adds like something nice to it. So let's see, let's play with gradients. I think that tends to unite your colors too, if you can bring a un unifying color on top with gradients. And an easy way to do that is with a gradient adjustment mask or adjustment layer. So let's see, first. I want to select my figure and we're going to put it underneath the highlight layer and on top of the lines layers so we can affect all of those layers underneath. Hmm.
see, I think I'm gonna go for a warmer color up top. Because her candles are there. Right now it looks weird because like, I need to tweak the blending mode. Also bring some subtle shadow to it and then it's darker here but lighter up top. I think that works well with her um, candles kind of lighting up the top of her head. We're gonna play more. Let's see here. Bring in a green. What happens? Where are blue? Because then we have that warm, cool contrast. Which I do kind of like. Too bright. This is something else I enjoy about digital is just being able to sit here and tweak these settings on the fly. I like it with the warm up top and the cool green on the bottom. Alright, let's keep. There, before, after. Actually, let's play with blending modes, shall we? Let's see if anything interesting happens. I have never found a use for dissolve. One of these days I will. It just looks so weird. Darken looks kind of interesting. looks interesting too. Let's see. Multiply. Multiply is a little more subtle. Hue is, is definitely less subtle. I think I'm going to stick with multiply. I see where my shading is weird. What is causing that? Ah, okay, it's on the skin layer. I may have forgotten to color that part. Yep, there we go. I feel better. She's come together. Okay, candles. Yes, let us candle. Candles I found that I actually really enjoy painting them. They're surprisingly fun to paint.
See where I painted over the base of the other one. Oops. Yeah, I'm unsure if why this one got on its own base, but not the other one. Hmm. Mysteries. Oh well. I'll figure it out later. I'm just laying in the big shadow because I can come in here and carve out the highlights for the uh, for the shapes on the candle. Easier than trying to sit here and do each, like paint around each curve. I'm not sure if anyone else is into this, but I've been watching the Alien 40th Anniversary shorts, and I'm getting kind of excited. They're, they've been pretty cool. Like, they've been trying to subvert expectations about what happens in an alien plot, because it's kind of all the same, right? Like, someone sticks their face in a creepy egg and gets face hugged stupidness ensues they've been doing some fun things like surprising you with who's exactly a victim in any case in any of the shorts that have been put out and I'm, I'm so hoping that it'll be blonde camp's take on aliens in the uh in whatever they're about to announce because i feel like all these shorts are leading up to an announcement And I'm excited because I'd love to see Sir Gony Weaver come back as as Ripley and be badass. I would just love that universe. Can do that for me, please. I am a Ripley fangirl. see how these candles are looking from far away. Bring back in some edges here. I feel like the shadow forms are making it get lost. And these are actually going to be small stickers, so they got to have some strong shapes, strong highlights. Another thing about painting candles is that the farther you get from the light source on them, the less you can tell that they're translucent because the light, uh, when you get like down towards the base, the light's not going to be showing up as much as it would through the top of the candle. Another little candle painting tips because I painted like 
God knows how many candles for the Cruise Shields of Art piece that I worked on some time ago. Got really close with candles for that piece. And then for another piece where it was an angel in a library full of candles and books. That was fun. There we go, let's put the candle holders on top. Problem solved. to the, the wedding this weekend there was a tanker on fire in the in the um, highway so that is a thing that happened it looked like nobody was hurt but we were stuck in traffic for like an hour while they put the fire out at least I hope nobody was hurt I saw when we drove by I saw that the driver was outside of the truck talking to the firefighters so I don't know how it got on fire I'm just I'm glad we didn't miss the ceremony that was that was kind of crazy you don't see a tanker on fire every day they had put it out by the time we got there so we were just there to witness the like to see the melted carriage of the truck it was crazy <laughs> sorry I'll try not to yawn it is so hard though. I say the word yawn and I'm just like, eh. I can probably sleep for another week, honestly. Life never seems to slow down around here. We are in desperate need of a vacation, if I'm honest, which is hopefully coming soon. Soonish. But then also I get to I'm gonna apply for like more conventions this week, so and some local art fairs because I'm trying to expand to my local community and show them the glory of the birthstone goddesses. Because I really think more of my target audience is at art fairs with this series than it is like my hardcore fantasy lovers. Like, I know you guys enjoy it too, but for the most part it seems like the demographic that's been buying has been older. Although I noticed the like more fantastical ladies that I got to have more fun with like November and uh, October. The fall ladies just ended up being this kind of like magical, surreal set of ladies. Slash goddesses. But yeah, the, those ladies tend to do pretty well with uh, my hardcore fantasy crowd. But I definitely want to see what will happen if I go to some of the art fairs around here. I'm very curious. And plus I have been thinking I need to get out and join my local art society and get involved in the local community because I'm such a hermit. It would be nice to like talk to other humans besides my husband more than once a week. We haven't done D&D &D in a while. And that was my other interaction with the world of humans in the post office. Ta-da! Yay! Okay, let's...
let's play with the candles for a good bit. <laughs> Not playing D&D in the post office, just uh, actually going to drop off orders and packages and whatnot at the post office. For those orders that require going to the post office, which most of them don't these days, but international packages do, so I always gotta go up there. For uh, international packages. Otherwise, I just have them do pickups most of the time. Landing. I'm I'm in D and D withdrawals right now, but I would be patient. Got to make sure everybody is happy and healthy so we can play. And meanwhile, I'll just write character fan fiction, which is what I end up doing whenever um, games get stalled or on hiatus. I just write character fan fiction. It's been a surprisingly good thing for my writing muse. Except for the fact I, I have like a billion projects that I want to write. Like the... I randomly, because of D&D withdrawals, want to do a webcomic about my blood hunters. And it wouldn't even be about their exciting adventures. Although maybe if I weren't, like, if I put more effort into it, it could be about them going on hunts. But mostly, I just wanted to do dumb skits of these characters at camp just between their missions and what they talk about because the two blood hunters, one's a sassy foul mouth werewolf and the other is this socially awkward mortician who doesn't really know how to talk to people and they kind of went to training at the blood hunter lodge together so they, they're kind of friends but they annoy each other <laughs> so it'd be about them like annoying each other and also having these moments at camp where they're like just talking about life and stuff. I don't know, it's a weird idea, but I kind of want to do it. I just have to stop being afraid of, of comics. Comics sound like a lot of effort. Unless I could find some magical screen tones to lay in the backgrounds. Or I can do like what the One Punch guy does and just if you've ever, if you didn't know, the One Punch anime was actually inspired by this artist who was doing this really crappily drawn comic on his lunch break, and then another artist who's, who does uh, comics took his shitty lunch drawings and turned them into a better drawn series. Maybe I could do that and just not care that it's bad.
guess I should shade the candle bases, huh? Must not put in wood texture. Stay simple, Angela. Yeah, like backgrounds are the main thing about drawing a comic, even though I know a lot of comic artists use uh, like Clip Studio and they also use Google SketchUp. And that seems to make the job a lot easier because then you just can kind of trace your basic shapes and not have to hurt your brain so much. Then I have to learn a thing. But it seems like if, if I could learn it, that would be so helpful. And not just for making comics, but just for for making backgrounds for my pictures too. And like the name of the wind panel, <clears throat> Daniel Sandals was talking about how he used Google SketchUp to help him draw this scene with like a water wheel and a really complex like cityscape and that was pretty cool it's funny because dan was like he has reference put together for everything because he's like i am really crap at drawing <laughs> or not drawing but like at imagining things so he'd rather just put together he'd rather just put together a reference sheet and some 3d models and boom just copy it and paint it because he's he's like amazing at just copying what he sees, which is how I started drawing too. I used to copy, I used to copy X-Men comics, like not trace, but just look at them and draw them. So I got really good at replication until I moved into my own, you know, learning how to draw a bit better on my own from my imagination. There, I think there is something to be said about being able to replicate and how that challenges your imagination. It gets you thinking about shapes. <laughs> oh man, I need to pick up the How to Draw the Marvel Way. I've heard, it, it's just one of those classic books. I used to draw, let's see, was X-Men, it was basically anything Jim Lee did, because I just freaking love Jim Lee so much that I got all his comics, I got into Wildcats, which is still an awesome comic. But the way he drew people was just amazing. So I, I tried to replicate him a lot, and it probably shows in my art, because I do a lot of, I make a lot of mistakes that comic artists do, like pointing the toes, and like the toes are like these square boot shapes, like squared off triangle boot shapes. It's very Jim Lee. And then I got poofy lips, like Michael Turner, because I love Michael Turner as well. He drew, like, Witchblade and stuff. And I freaking love Witchblade! I haven't read it in years, but I, I love the concept of it. Like a sacred blade that... Like a sacred sentient blade that chooses worthy women to be badass? I am totally on board for all that.
Ah, okay. I got gotcha. you. It actually the the books that you mentioned that how to draw the Marvel how to draw Marvel sound like the books I used to get that were called like Draw Fifty Celebrities. And I loved the Draw Fifty Celebrity books. Or like Draw Fifty Anything. I learned how to do some of my first figural drawings from doing the like Draw Madonna or stuff like that. The Draw 50 books were the best. Hey Psyche, maybe we should team up. You can draw the backgrounds for me. Oh my god, I hate backgrounds so much. They are my bane. See, now the flowers I'm kind of... The flowers in this I'm kind of torn on. I don't really know if I should shade them that much. Because I don't want them to take away very much from her. Hmm. Oh my gosh, it is summer because my hand that's in the like glove for my Wacom is sweating and burning up because the screen is warm. The house is warm. Georgia, you be warm. This is great in winter, but it's not so great in summer. Hey, Aiden. Good to see you in the chat. I'm sitting here staring, trying to figure out how I'm going to color these flowers. Let's see, I'm going to pull up my little style. Where did I save her here? I'm going to pull up the little lady of January I did. Oh, I always pull up the wrong file. Okay. I need to delete that file. It's all set up. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I just kind of shaded some of the ones that were in the back. Maybe I should just do that with this one and leave the rest of it kind of simple, except for the border gems, perhaps. <laughs> it's like, hey, you're in win women's winter. That's what they call it when the AC is turned up in summer. It's, it's a really funny skit I saw. Look up wi women's winter. It's kind of a Game of Thrones joke, but I think non-Game of Thrones fans can enjoy it too. I kind of like the... I kind of like the uh, flowers being flat too. It's Hmm. Well, let's try it and see what happens. I'm just gonna pluck out a few of the flowers here and there. Although I need to put the yellow insides on a different layer. You can tell I'm getting tired because I'm like, yellow insides, what are they called? Flower bits. I have no idea. Flower centers. Oh, I'm sure they have a name. Flower bits. We're just gonna call it that for now. Something fell off my desk. I have no idea what it is. I'll find it later. Yeah, man. How you doing, Aiden? What you working on? Unless you're working right now. 
or you can talk about uh, any other exciting, fun things you've been drawing. I really liked the, um, there was like a character answer, the <laughs> sorry guys, my brain is starting to die. <laughs> okay, there was a character AMA that you were doing where you got to sketch the answers, and I thought that was so fun. I might have to try that sometime when I'm not feeling lazy. But yes, I liked that. It was good. Let's see. I do like it with just a random few plucked out. So some of them are pushed back, some of them are pushed forward. I think that works. It's simple. You know, I never shaded any part of that clothing either. <laughs> I should probably shade the barest bit of the trim. Let's do that before I forget. Too many layers. Wonder how many layers I'm up to. You should take bets by the end of this image. How many layers will Angela be up to? I'm gonna say like, including all the sketch layers and stuff, I'm gonna say like, 120. Yeah, actually no, not not that high. Probably more like 80. Especially since I'm shading on the colors and not keeping the shadow on another layer. I am actually having good layer economy this time. Go me. I actually find that doing it this way, where I'm coloring on the layer itself, keeps me from doing too much detail. And I treat it more like a traditional painting because it's forcing me to keep my mistakes and paint on top of them. Part of the reason why, part of the reason why I think traditional paints, painting looks the way that it does, is that you see all these micro flaws and they're kept in the piece like the texture of the paper and the brush stroke and all that stuff so that's one reason i'd actually suggest painting on one layer if you're trying to get a painterly look like what i'm doing right now it's good to um keep your colors and your shading all in one layer That way you preserve some of the spontaneity of coloring and painting. <laughs> Are my layers named? Let's see. You know, for once it looks like I... No, no. What the heck is 16 and 17? No, 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 I don't... Oh, blush. Blush. We're gonna name it now. Blush and uh, highlight dimples. Highlight dimples. Dimples. <laughs> I have such a bad habit of just rushing through and not naming my layers. So y'all are keeping me honest. See some gaps in my trim here. Thank you. 
and now I need to take a break. Weird, did I put the green trim and the gold trim on the same layer? Why did I do that? But first, let us stretch. Let us save, and then let us stretch. Ooh. I have a habit of tilting my head when I draw. And keeping it tilted forever and ever. So this is good. And this is valuable time to let my hand cool off from being against a fiery hot Cintiq in a Georgia weather. Georgia summer. I don't even think it's summer yet, but we have summer-like weather today. Let me tell you. It's like 85 degrees. I like this stretch. It feels good. Yes, I have this set to go off every hour. So I remember to move because I get way too intense. take care of these flowers at the bottom and save one more time so I'm kind of unsatisfied with this this I must play with it I'm gonna need to fix that trim. That trim shouldn't be on the same layer. So we'll call this green trim. I think what's actually bothering me about the pant leg is just a little too soft. A little too soft of a transition. I'm gonna bring some form back into it. Oh, and I never shaded the purple either. Her, her little violet corset with the weaving. There were some cosplayers who were talking to me at some of the conventions I've been to with, with this series and they were, 
they were saying they wanted to cosplay some of the costumes from this series, and I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Cosplayers, come to me. So if you're a cosplayer and you're listening to this, I would love to see you try to cosplay these. In fact, it's, it's in my agenda to try and uh, make some cosplay shards. But it's sort of lower on the list until I get more demand for that. Like, I've got maybe like three or four people asking for cosplay stuff, but I think I need just a little more than that to, to bump it up on the list. So if you're a cosplayer and you're interested in this, let me know and I'll consider bumping it higher up on the list. And I might try to do that anyway just because I want to see people cosplay stuff. I think it would be a lot of fun. And then I have to um, make these costumes make logical sense. Okay, can't avoid the bottom forever, so let me get on these, these flowers. Which are all on the same layer. Oh boy. Let's see, let's separate these out. I need the stems and the flower bits on the same layer on isolated layers. flower bits. Okay, now they're all on the, the correct layers. Actually, are they? Let's see. Yep. Okay. We're good. I can do this. Just have to decide what is farther away and what I should group together value-wise.
funny enough, this is kind of how I shaded the original watercolor ladies. The shading on the flowers was kept super simple because I didn't want it to be too busy. So I grouped the flowers together with um, mainly with big shadow shapes. And sometimes overlapped with a few little shadows like this just to give it a little more depth. The main goal is just trying to keep it simple. Let the line work do the heavy lifting, especially in the, the watercolor ones. Those were all about the line work. And these kind of are too. These uh, chibi styles, that is. Alright, let's see how this looks from far away. I like it. We shall keep it. Speaking of things, fandom things on TV, I've also been watching Cobra Kai because um, my husband's big into it for one, and also it's, it's sort of from my 80s generation that the Karate Kid movie is like a beloved movie. And for all intents and purposes, this series shouldn't be that good. It seems like a dumb, the premise of it seems like a dumb cash-in. But you know what? It's actually pretty good. I like how they're trying to bring some depth to these characters that were just kind of like 80s movies cheese. So like Johnny, like they're not even trying to justify the bully per se, but just like explore the reasons that someone might be a bully and that balance between well how do you be, become a better person and try to fight the stuff that was instilled into your head by other bullies or abusive parental figures it's actually a pretty pretty good show so I recommend it if you know someone with a YouTube a YouTube account, which also comes with cool music. I don't know how many people know that. But it's a pretty good deal. You get Google Music and then um, the, uh, the ability to watch YouTube without ads and also the uh, access to Cobra Kai and other originals. We've enjoyed it. Welcome back, Psykeen. You didn't miss much. I was obsessively coloring flowers and talking about Cobra Kai. Although now I'm getting a little too detailed with these and I need to stop. I should stop. Now 
might have to make some decisions. Oh. Let's see, I, need, I think that it would be good if the gradient extended to the background candle. So let us create a selection for that real quick. I'm not sure I like how that cools down the candle, so undo. It does look better with her popping out from them, so we'll leave them sort of on their own thing. I don't think I'm going to push that leaf back. what a I'm thinking for stickers I don't want anything too intrusive in the background but it'd be nice I think for visual interest to have something here like another like a very subtle gradient on a ah, make this background work better I think Okay, I need to clip. I need to clip it so it's not overwhelming my senses. It's a very subtle thing, but I think I 
think that works for me. I might tweak this later. Maybe maybe come add more shading here around the borders, pop that border a bit. Or I can put it under the trim. leave it for now, but I'll probably tweak it later. And now the gems! Too many layers and it's gonna auto select it. That's my trick for finding a layer if it's buried too deep within, is just put this on auto select and poke it, and then it brings up the layer for you. Okay. try and sync it up with the with her eye color so it kind of visually ties it in I'm also trying to think of what, where these facets are catching the light. So I think actually, so far I have the light kind of coming in from the top. But also a fair amount of global lighting because I'm just trying to make something very aesthetically appealing here. Monkey God 416. Welcome to the stream. All right, Nighty Sam. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you got all the words written. But yes, Monkey God 416, feel free to introduce yourself. Let us know what you're working on. Are you an artist too? Or a writer or any kind of creative? I can try to help. I'm not going to pretend I am a master at this. I am always working. Or always learning, rather. But feel free to leave a question and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Thank you. 
so I'm just coming back in with a much more saturated version of this purple to show how the, the, there's a glow going on in this gem. Monkey God asks, I am creating a business and I need a logo and a banner for the FB page and would like to know if I could help. I think that's probably better off to someone who's a graphic designer. I'm not much of a logo designer or a banner designer. They're not really my specialties and I don't really enjoy doing that. So you'd probably be better off finding someone who enjoys doing that kind of thing. I'm much more into illustration. So if you end up with any kind of a fantasy or surreal illustration projects, that could be where you come talk to me. Even though right now I'm not quite available while I'm working on my own stuff. But good luck! And now I am popping these highlights. I'm coming back in with some harder edged highlights because that helps bring some uh, texture to these gems. It also shows how the light's kind of refracting inside. be getting a little too carried away with it so let's zoom out see how it's doing that works I'm happy with that let's see if I can soften up the uh, bottom highlights a little may cheat a bit with this with the circle ones because they're all gonna be sort of the same-ish.
copy and paste. <laughs> Although I'm not quite happy with that gym yet, so let me fiddle with it more. Cheaters. Shh. Don't tell anyone. But if there's anything I've learned by trying to do this as a job, <laughs> you save time where you can, or you, you, sh you just gotta save time where you can because stuff takes too much time. Constant merge. Actually, let me try to play with the contrast. So now I just need to make a decision. With gradient, without gradient. And how that works as a sticker. Or should I just bring in some really soft shadow to the outside and Leave the rest flat. realize I didn't have the outer trim on its own layer, so I gotta make that layer now. And there we go! We have Leia! test out some more gradient layers or gradient bleh, gradient adjustment layers to see if I like some subtle shading in here too.
Sleeping masks are your friends. Actually, I have a better idea. Let's try inner glow instead, because that'll follow the edges of the trim instead of being a flat surface. I think I used this effect when I was um, doing some mock-up enamel pins as well. Because then you can control the, uh, the depth of that shading. It's kind of handy. So don't lose, you don't destroy any of the coloring you've done underneath because you can just cancel that effect if you don't like it. In fact, I might just do a subtle inner glow on this one too. Oh, inner shadow. No, and I'm like, why is it not showing up? Because I'm getting tired. And there we go. This is the right thing. not showing up or I'm going crazy. Actually, I think I know what I want to do. Let us combine the trim and the medallion. That's going to be the wrong thing, isn't it? Yep. These layers, please. I kind of like this. I'm sure I will tweak this a billion times before I call it done. But we're getting close to what I think the final look for this piece is gonna be. You would look very cute on stickers. Oh, 
Okay. So for now, let's save. And I'm gonna call this done. Or pseudo done, because I'm sure I'll come back and sort of tweak and perfect things. But I think I'm there. So that was a fun experiment. And I'm sure I'll get better as I go along with the, um, with each slate little gym lady, because I've got 11 more of these to color. Since I need to refine the little January lady, since this is the February lady, and then January lady still needs some work. It's very rough. But yeah, uh, let's call it for tonight. It's been on for about almost three hours, so I think I'm gonna go and stretch and relax. Thanks to everyone who tuned in today. It's been great hanging out with, with you guys. And if you like what you see, consider tossing in a dollar over at my Patreon so I can keep making pretty arts and publishing all of my coloring books and things. You can also hit me up with a subscribe if you have Amazon Prime on Twitch. And um, I'll be back on Wednesday to work on more of these little gym ladies. And that's Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to keep this routine as going as far as I can. So maybe I'll see you all then. And for now, I hope you guys have a lot of inspiration. And I will catch you later. And good night. Oh, yeah. And before I say good night, if you like my art, you can find more at angelasasser.com. If you like the gym ladies, they have their own site at gymgoddesses.angelicshades.com. And now I'm going to say good night. So good night, you guys. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.